What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Bolero. Sam here. I'm with the usual suspects. Say hi, guys. Hello, hello. Yeah! <clears throat> Gab and Maui, welcome back. Uh, before we start our discussion, our UAAP discussion today, I just want to say shout out and congratulations to the girls and boys under 16 teams recently winning their international, their respective international competitions. Uh, future looks bright, uh, very exciting. Both uh, the women, uh, the girls and boys basketball teams dominating their competition. Uh, any thoughts? Anything you want to say? Uh, let's go with Maui first. Oh, happy lang ako na may next generation players tayo na from familiar names like the star of the under-16 men's was boys was Kiefer Alas, CJ Amos, and even anak ni Gabby Espinas, si Ziv Espinas played. I think also, I'm not sure, but I think also anak ni RDO was part of the team. But it's really anything, anytime, anytime a national team wins, not just in basketball, uh, we're happy. Uh, I don't know if you, we were talking off air kanina, we were talking about the women's, uh, FIFA World Cup naman. Uh, hopefully, we finally get that first goal sa next game. We Sana. were robbed kanina, sayang. So, any, anytime, anytime a Philippine team is competing abroad and they win anything, I, I'm really ecstatic about it. Uh, especially if it's basketball. Um, so, hopefully, we see these players. I mean, we've been talking about basketball and uh, Gilas. Hopefully, we see some of these players from the under-16 go into the to the seniors team in, in the next few years. Maganda kasi yung, yung talagang may experience mula youth hanggang, hanggang maging senior team which is very prevalent in other nations. That's something I want to see. In lang. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point, no, Maui. And siguro, now that you brought it up, um, I guess medyo, I don't know. I don't know why actually. I didn't expect it. Pero medyo naging controversial or triggered yung mga comments dun sa last episode natin uh, about Kai Soto. But really, to Maui's point, every time a Filipino will represent us in international competition, and because we're boleros, fans kami ng basketball, we, we get really excited and we're super happy. So, I don't know, maybe the people didn't watch the entire episode, pero apparently some people thought we were hating on Kai. That's, that's not true. We're big fans of Kai and I remember... I remember when he was in high school or when he was young, we were also looking forward to watching Kai represent the the under-16 team or ano ba yung team na he represented before. I also remember when Kai grew 7-3. I went to the Ateneo Blue Eagle Gym. I told my wife, we have to go watch this guy before he leaves for Atene- for the high school. I have to see the 7-3 kid playing in the juniors. So, ganun din, no? I mean, these kids now, itong sina Kiefer Alas, later on, sila na yung magiging Kai Soto na inaabangan natin ng mga stars of their respective teams. So, uh, it it starts sa humble beginnings and it's ganda na napapanood natin sila now. And I, I think, um, dun sa mga, ano, mga na-trigger lang, we've been fans of Kai ever since. Lalo na Ateneo Ateneo Galing, Oh. So, just just to clarify things. Gab, anything hindi you want to say? Hindi, 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 hindi lang sila nakikinig. Sinabi natin na we were being objective, eh. Talaga, oh. Anyway, well, anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, on to the topic, no, the Gilas under 60 boys and girls. Ako, I, I was pretty happy with the girls team. Kasi, Doon mo na nakita mm-hmm. talaga na sobrang streamlined ng programa nila as compared to the men's or the boys' team. Kasi yung, if you look at yung nas, uh, women's team, yung senior women's team ng Gilas, a lot of those players, except for those who were recruited from abroad, no? uh, like Vanessa De Jesus, a lot, a lot of those players came up from the Gilas girls' team. Uh, and uh, eventually went to NU under Coach Patakino and eventually played for the Gilas women's team. And I think their under-16 team is coached by Patakino too. Patakino, yeah. So, I was gonna say. 
So yeah. I love the continuity uh, of what they're doing in the girls and the women's Gilas program under Coach Patakino. Because uh, yes, it might favor NU that they're all being recruited to go to NU. <laughs> Ako, I don't really, I don't really mind it if it means that. They're developing under one coach and they're developing together and they're playing and they're having success. I don't really care much for, more about it. Ako, I love seeing it. No, na, there's obviously a program in place for the girls and the women's to create success, and it has resulted in much success for the women's uh, Gilas team. You know, they're they were in the what do you call that the women's world cup i think or the asian championships the asian championships mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. they they've been promoted to division a they won against chinese taipei in the last tournament so uh oh, i'm all for it it's been really cool seeing it unfold yung this program and I don't think you can say the same for the boys team. I, I know I'm, I'm I'm sound like I'm hating no they just won the championship. But I would love to see how many of these guys in the under 16 would would you actually see in the Gilas men's program? I think Sam, you brought this up, no? Uh there was this post na yung the 23 for 23 ni coach Chotres, the the younger kids supposedly going up to the seniors team in Gilas. <laughs> seven of them are now in the pool for for yeah. the 2020 maybe World less. Cup, so, or maybe less, and we're still relying on the older players to to play in the World Cup. So I really question if there's really a program happening here in the boys to the men's team. As, when you compare it to the girls to the women's team, uh, it seems like um, sovereign different new programs, no and. I, ako, I, you, I would love to see these boys from the under 16 go up and play in the men's team in the seniors. Kaso, I don't think the program is that as streamlined as what you see in the girls. Yeah, maybe it's not as streamlined, but I guess mas marami ding competition among like uh, uh, boys or men's players. To be fair, I think yung under 16 that represented the team, was it coached by Josh Reyes? Yung... Josh Reyes. Ni, so, yeah. yeah, Josh Reyes. So, yeah. so there is there is a semblance of continuity. Puro mga... <laughs> Josh Reyes is... Ripple drive the, offense! Let's of go! Shot, diba? <laughs> well, that's a different story, Gab. Um, pero maganda yung point mo, ano, na uh, about the streamlined women's team and kahit na pumunta sila lahat sa NU, I think, I think that's like a good point na kahit pumunta silang NU, okay lang. Because... You know what? At the end of the day, if dun talaga sila develop and dun sila gagaling, and they will re- end up representing the Philippines, that's what it's, that's what's important, diba? I mean, most of the time, masyadong blue yung podcast na to, masyadong bias sa Ateneo. But at the end of the day, like, if the players from other teams or other schools end up representing the Philippines or maybe representing the Philippines in international leagues, let's say the B League or uh, KBL, then we're all for it. We're all for that. Lastly, I think I think Coach Pat Aquino does not get enough credit. Uh, he That's really, not talaga. That's not. He really is probably one of the best coaches in the Philippines, but he doesn't get that much uh, clout or he's not as popular probably because he's coaching the women's teams or the girls' teams. Pero really, I believe that ako dito ay Coach Pat Aquino. And to be fair to him, he had such a great program and a great team with NU. And I think he stepped down. Diba? Si uh, Coach Aris si, ba yung... Si, si, si Aris di maunahan na yung coach. Yeah. He stepped down kahit na they still had the streak. And, you know, according to him, he wanted to step down so that he can focus on all the Gilas or international competitions on developing yeah, the tama. Gilas team. Or, sorry, tama pala yan. Gilas yung women's. But, <laughs> diba? Exactly. This guy has fully dedicated his life to 
training the future of or building women's basketball in the Philippines. And he doesn't get enough credit for that, I think. So, shout out to Coach Pat Aquino for that. So, so tutulong, I was surprised talaga eh, na siya pa yung coach na under 16, pero yeah, dilib, and, dilib. Uh, yung great point, Sam. Uh, and we didn't get to talk about it much uh, and I think we're sort of uh, getting off top here. But, you know, uh, in the Asian Championships, despite us losing, I think, majority of our games there, right. I think we finished seventh or fifth. I, I, I yeah, 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 yeah. But we played competitively in every game and we played progressive basketball, modern progressive basketball. One big and all shooters. Shooters. Uh, I loved watching them play. So, brang ganda nila panoorin. The, the offense was, was, was gunning. Uh, Jack Animam was incredible. I love watching that. Yung that woman play, he's just amazing. She is just an amazing basketball player. And ako, uh, I'm happy na that she's na she got a Nike ad. Yeah. Parang she's being sponsored by Nike, and you know, a more spotlight is being shown in this woman because she is amazing. And more more Filipinos should get to watch Jack Jack Animam play. Sobrang galing niya and. Patakino and what he's doing with the women's program. Galing. So speechless yung what, they're, yung what they've been doing. Okay. Kudos to them. Congratulations again. Speaking of NU, the NU women's team, today we're going to talk about the NU men's basketball team or the seniors uh, team. And I know we talked about them briefly nung pinag-usapan natin yung mga recent championships because NU was very competitive nga, but they made it to the finals. Almost beat Ateneo. They just lost by like one or two points. Um, but seems like every year, we we always talk about NU as one of the dark horse teams to win to win the championship. And you know what? When I look back at it, nung nag-champion yung NU, Medyo dark horse pick din sila nun eh, di ba? Kasi hindi sila expected to win that year. Yeah, no, wala si Bobby Ray. Ray. Oh. I don't think anyone was picking them as a dark horse even in that year. Uh, hindi <laughs> hindi dark si horse Bobby level Ray. eh, no? Out of nowhere <laughs> lang eh, no? Tama, 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 tama. But yeah, the, the, last, few, the last few seasons, uh, I think NU has been very solid. They've been well coached. Uh, they have a good system. They have they have a good crop of recruits, despite a lot of recruits also leaving their team. Uh, pero they're always like dark horse. Or ngayon, I think the last time we discussed, sabi natin, lock, top four, final four team ang NU. But what, would, what does NU need to do to take it to the next level? And last time we talked about this, we kind of focused on the new guys. Kasi sila yung mga naglaro nung finals and semifinals. So I want to talk about the older guys. The returning uh, players for NU, the vets. Kasi if they're going to win a championship, it's probably going to be on their shoulders. Maybe except for Humamoy, Jumamoy, baka he just goes wild and becomes like a rookie MVP. But other than that, it's going to be on the shoulders of the vets. So, what do these vets need to do to take this team to the next level? Let's start with you, Gab. Let's, why don't you focus on, let's focus on the guards first. See, si Steve Nash and Viquez, Keen Baklaan, Patrick Yu, yung yung mga veteran guards that they relied on last season, what do they need to do to take this team to the next level and bring the championship back to NU? All right. Uh, so I'm going to start with Kian Baklaan because I think he's the guy. Okay. He's him in, 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 in NU. And uh, when the game is on the line, he gets the ball and he's allowed to do whatever he wants. Uh, in terms of what improvement he needs to make, I still think defensively he gets taken advantage of a lot. Uh, we saw in that um, 
final four game against mm-hmm. UP last season. He was incredible on offense. I think he was carrying them in the fourth quarter. Their their offense was just him. But on defense, he was also getting cooked by JD. By JD, uh, who else was uh wait by Terrence Forte, uh, Harold, Harold Alarcon. They were hunting for him on, on defense because he's pretty small. So uh for me, that's his improvement. That's what I think he needs to improve on the most. Because I because I think he's he's already a pretty good um scorer. He's already a pretty good uh a, a pretty good distributor. For Steve Nash, now he's the interesting one, no? Because there are times he looks like he's he's Magic Johnson. He's, or Steve, you know, Nash. Steve Nash. He looks like Steve or, Nash. Or Steve Nash. You know? he, he can dominate the game just by his passing and he can get to the hole at, at will, no? Uh, but I think for Steve Nash, he has to be a better shooter and a better scorer. I think yun yung kulang eh, diba? When you talk when you talk about NU, Kian Baklan, yes, he can shoot, he can get to the basket, he has that mid-range pull-up. But who else? Diba? Especially when you go against teams in the fourth with top teams in the fourth quarter in crunch time, when they lock you down on defense. Who is that other guy who can get you a bucket? We know it's Kian Baklaan, but as evidence in their past big games, where we, with their full lineup, there doesn't seem to be anyone else who can get his own shot. Uh, you, sometimes sinasabay ni, ni Jeff Napa, Steve Nash, and si Kian Baklaan together. But, you know, uh, Steve Nash struggles to get his shot off against tighter defenses. He's not really a knockdown shooter. Uh, uh, yung... Uh, yung I would say that he's uh, he's not really a shooter. Well, he's a pretty horrible shooter. Uh, he tries to get to the basket, but he's not as efficient do- doing so. So, for me, just to take the load off Peky and Baklan, I think Steve Nash has to improve on the offensive end. No, um, just to be someone to take the load off uh, Peky and Baklan, and this, I think the same can be said of Patrick Q. There. I think there were times in season 84 that Patrick Yu looked like, you know, he, he was he was coming, he was becoming a star. I, I forgot the, which game it was. Na he scored, I, I, I think, eight straight points. Right, right. I think the first half of the season, sabog siya. Sabog, sabog niya. Yeah. But the second half, I I think he picked up. This. Yeah, tama. He had like really solid games. Yeah, so there are times, no, na he... He has these stretches where he looks like he's the next big thing for for NU, and he has all the tools. You know, he's he's a guard who's six foot four. Uh, you'd think he he could get the he could get his shot off against anyone as against any smaller guard on defense. He could he's as fast as the smaller guards. He's as tall as the wing player. So you know he, he seems to have it, but. It's not as consistent, you know. Again, shooting is a problem. He's not as consistent of a knockdown shooter, uh, and you struggles with him on the floor shooting because uh, he's a guard who can't shoot. So, for both these guards, uh, I think playmaking and scoring has to be a point of emphasis. And you and shooting, uh, if they're gonna go far this season. Not, not just in the final four, but 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 into the finals, they're gonna have to rely on those two veteran guards to to do more than just you know uh, be secondary playmakers and do good on defense. They have to score also. They they have to get buckets. Maui, anything you wanna add? I think Gab made very good points, uh, especially about Steve Nash. I think. What really lacked Steve Nash last year was that outside shot. Uh, if you watch him games ng NU sa preseason, uh, he's starting to jack up three-pointers, which is not very evident uh, from the previous season. But uh, basically, I think you, the one thing that NU really has to do is one of their biggest strengths ng season last season was that you don't know who's in yung gagawa. Everyone was, everyone was scoring every game. There was a different scorer. 
except probably nung, nung dulo when Kieran Baklaan really broke out. I think for NU to really go up a notch, there has to be at least three to four players that play consistently. Um, probably si Figueroa, probably si Humamoy, or probably si Steve Nash. There has to be probably three or four players that score at least 10 points. Uh, uh, I'm not sure how many players averaged 10 points for NU last year. I wouldn't be surprised if only Kian Baklan averaged 10 points or if he didn't average 10 points. But I think for most teams, I think yung NU kasi before the nag-champion, kahit pa paano, si Troy Rosario was one of the top players. Uh, I mean, most of the players, even if they were a dark horse team, went to went into the PBA because they really shined also. So for NU to be able to to, to play another level, I think, next season, there has to be three or four players that has to step up and become a uh, consistent uh, contrib- contribute that give consistent contribution every game. It they have to turn their strength into to more. Parang last season kasi it surprised talaga ako sino. So right this season, hopefully some of those players become more consistent. Especially since si John, they lost John Lloyd Clemente, which is one of the players that had a lot of usage and was taking a lot of shots. So there will be room for a, at least two or three players to step up next season. So hopefully that happens. Strength in numbers, no? I think yung, what you're trying to say last season, strength in numbers din yung advantage nila. Uh, before we move on, Gab, are you, are you going to add something? Ah, no. Just okay. uh, go, go lang. Next player. Two things. Two things na I just wanted to add. I think, Gab, you mentioned si Baklaan gets picked on defense. Uh, Steve Nash is also like super small and he gets picked on defense also. So, like when he... I think he, need, he needed to play both guys sometimes last season because kulang talaga sa playmaking. Walang offense kapag wala yung isa sa kanila. But pag nagsabay sila, sobrang liit naman nung guard lineup nila. Second thing, I think the two of you missed the most important thing that Baklaan needs to work on. He needs to stop kicking pag tumitira siya para hindi siya matechnical. <laughs> hindi siya matechnical, <laughs> hindi siya mawala, masuspend, and cause his team the win, di ba? <laughs> I think yun. So, Kian Baklaan, hindi to football, basketball tayo. Uh, let's move on. Maui, Maui mentioned it already. Strength in numbers. It's not just, you know, I think Keen Baklaan was the leading scorer, the lead guy for NU last year. If you had to pick one, probably Sha. But NU is a very deep team and they have a bunch of like athletic, strong wings. We have Malonzo. We had Figueroa, who's like a former MVP. And then I think in the middle of the season, si Jolo Manansala came out uh, and, you know, top scored for the team, contributed solid minutes, one of the key players now for the team. Dun sa mga wings slash forwards mo, Maui, anything that you think these guys need to work on, specific, specific player or just in general? I think si, si Gab was very adamant in saying that the main thing that NU really had... This is from previous episodes, guys. Uh, the, the main thing that NU has to work on this offseason is outside shooting. And if you watch the games nila sa mga Phil Oil and the other leagues, you see Figueroa... I, I mentioned this in another episode. Figueroa hit, I think, six three-pointers in one game. Malonzo had a game that he had a few three-pointers also. I think these wing players are athletic, long. They can match up pretty well with, with players such as LeBron Lopez and the, probably sila Kai Balungay from Ateneo. But I think if they add a three-point shot into the, into, into the equation, I think the jobs of Steve Nash, the jobs of uh, Kian Baklaan will be easier because it will open up the floor. There will be less uh, broken plays. There will be less... 24 shot, 24 uh, shot clock violation for for NU, and I think they're on the right track. NU is on the right track. If you watch them so off season, they're really 
other teams have, have padded their lineups with new recruits. And was is working mostly on 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 the returning players, and most of them have really improved. Some of them I didn't even uh, recognize from previous seasons are starting to really contribute this off season. So I think that's that's the main thing. Uh, NU was a top tier team last season, but how can they get to to that championship contender level? They're a play, they're definitely a playoff level team, but if their players, if their wing players start to contribute um, efficiently and consistently with with Sina Bakla and Steve Nash, I think they're a very dangerous team next season. Okay, Gab. Ano ang lahat gawin ng wings, ng forwards para maging same level na yung NU as championship contenders like Ateneo and UP? Okay, so I would like to split those three forwards into two groups. So one Sige. of the groups is si Jake Figueroa. The other two, si Malonzo and si Manansala. I'll, take, I'll discuss that later. Si Figueroa, I think, is very different from Manansala and Malonzo. Because I, I think you've seen starting season 85, Coach Jeff Napa is giving a lot more uh, playmaking and ball handling responsibilities to Figueroa as opposed to Manansala and Malonzo. I think Manansala and Malonzo are, ve- are very similar players. No? They're long, uh, very athletic, athletic uh, uh, hardworking, wings, mga, hard mga, mga, mga hardworking, mga Mga basurero, diba? I think the game that Ateneo lost against NU in the second round, Manansala, Manansala destroyed them on the op- oh, oh destroyed them on the offensive glass, just jumping out of his mind, getting offensive okay. rebounds, diba? I, I I remember that. Kaya sabi ko, damn, this Jolo Manansala kid, he's so Bad long thing. and he can jump so high. So and they're very similar, you know, kay Mike Malonjo. So anyway, to Figueroa. I think he has to be the guy na pwede mag play make sa secondarily without losing any matchups on defense. Diba? You talked about it, Sam. When Steve Nash and Kian Baklana on the floor, medyo mahirap ka on defense because they're two smaller guards. Figueroa is a guy, I think he's 6'4", 6'5", who can handle long. the ball, but yeah, long and not as well, though. Yun yung problema, no? Uh, He's given some freedom to handle the, the ball during pick and roll. Pero nakita mo, hindi kasing tight yung handle niya. I think that's something he can improve on. You know, uh, aside from the shooting, where with which Maui mentioned. Figueroa can uh, penetrate and uh, do some ball handling. However, when he gets pressured, no, especially by smaller players, he, he tends to pick up his dribble a lot. And you know, kick out doesn't really have a consistent, uh, doesn't have counters to uh, his offensive game. No, he'll he'll make uh, his first move, but as soon as that move is stopped, he doesn't have a counter or a secondary move, and usually he'll just pass it off air or or kick it out. And uh, to me, he's very different, no, uh, yung as to Manansala and Malonzo because I think he has the potential to be that secondary playmaker. And it can't just be all Kian Baklaan in the clutch, you know, making plays for everyone. I think si Figueroa has to be that guy to support on, on offense. And yun nga, uh, very glaring yung lack of a shot ni Jake Figueroa uh, last season. If you watch a lot of the NU games, which I did... <laughs> Uh, there are times talaga na sobrang dry sila on offense and their defense will just carry them. They'll just keep, keep the game close. I, I I do remember a game against FEU where the final score was like game. 49. I remember that game. Parang <laughs> that quarter. was such an ugly game. <laughs> Ang lala nun. Oh, lala nun game yun. Third quarter, parang may team ata below 20 pa eh. If I remember that oh. game correctly. Yeah. Yep. Lala and nun. it was such a good defensive game. But so ugly on offense. No one could yeah, hit a yeah, shot. Yeah. Right. And that's very apparent, you know, for, for NU. They have stretches, like long stretches. They can't hit anything. Diba? Uh and that many wide open shots, but they can't hit them. So uh yun, something for Jake Figueroa. And for Mike Malonzo and Jolo Manansala, I think Maui is right on point with it. Outside shooting, you know, 
parang sasabay sila wala nangyayari on offense you know with teams just pack the paint i think you, you saw it uh, in phil oil when and you played up teams will just pack the paint and they can't generate any more offense because you know manansala and malonzo they rely on uh paint points to slashing the oh, yep uh to to get their offense they don't have any consistent outside shooting so uh outside shooting talaga is a big hole in the, in those two players games and you know they're pretty small also for to play the power forward style i think i brought this up in uh the last game so i would happily see i would be happy to see them play more of the traditional wing players um malonzo starts al- alongside Omar John as the power forward eh. but yeah, I yeah. think he's uh pretty undersized no I think uh, I I mentioned na last or, or last last episode that maybe they would be better served in playing Palacelo as their power forward than moving si Malonzo and si Maransala if they have a consistent outside shot to the small forward or to the wing position so yun that's my take on those three players yeah um I, ako, I super love Manansala and Malonzo, but tama naman kayo, no? It's it's the shooting talaga that they need to be, develop. Kahit isa sa kanila, I would think, if one of them can develop like a solid or get like a good three-point percentage in the next season where defenses will have to respect that guy, I think that will like open up the lanes for the guards of NU at least. Uh, oh, I... Let's let's move on to the last spot, last position, the big man position. And I think this one, Gab, let's start with you because I know my favorite kang player dito. We have Palacelo and... Do we assume Omar John's returning? Parang... Yeah, I see si Diasana is like, playing. Next but season, I think, Omar, si Diasana, I think. Okay. So Omar John and Palacelo is returning. Uh, anything you expect to see from them that maybe you haven't seen yet but I know you super love Palacelo Gap. Oh, I've sang praises for PJ Palacelo ever since I saw him play against UP in season 85. I I think he was plugged in there for a few minutes and he got eight straight points, hit, hit jump shots, hit hook shots. I'm like, Parang why are they playing my... Ata, eh. he, yeah. He a shot or so, something. Para si Nigaw ko na sa TV noon. Bakit yung panilalaro si Jeremy Mahinay? You have this guy. <laughs> boy, favorite ko yun si Mahinay, chunky boy. Oh yeah, he's, 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 he's a fellow uh, husky boy. Pero, di ba? I don't get it. Uh, <laughs> si Jeremy Mahinay is, is pretty limited on offense. This guy pala si Elo, uh, has stuff. Ayun nga. Uh, I expect the big things from pala si Elo. I don't expect him to be a star player by any means. No? Baka people are expecting na he's gonna be a 15 point 15 point per game guy will make the mythical five I, I, I don't think he's that Cruz, oh like a Jervy Cruz player I don't think he's that type but I do expect him to contribute no uh he ha- he has a more polished offensive game than either Manansala or uh Malonzo uh, ako lang, ah, from what I've seen, he has a better jump shot. He has an outside shot. He, touch niya, he has no? post. He has a, he has amazing post moves, and since he got slimmer, he can now protect the rim. Uh, so f- for me, he's a better option than those two athletic uh, players, Manansala and Malonzo, in uh, yung at power forward. So. Uh, I think you'll see more plays run for him when he subs in for Omar John. I'm, I'm still assuming that he's going to be the backup to o- Omar John. You know, uh, I think Jeff Napa will go to him for more offense. Uh, and yeah, I do expect na PJ Palacelo will play meaningful minutes this season. I think he'll, he'll surprise a lot of players. Don't be surprised if you get a 20-point explosion for PJ Palacelo in in one of their games. I don't expect him to be consistently a high scoring player, but I do expect him to contribute. As for Omar John, can he get at least one other um 
post move aside from his running left-handed hook shot na basang-basa na ni, ni Malik Juf by now can he get at least one other post move para lang hindi siya palaging you know uh na outplay ni Malik Juf no uh he's not as fast as Malik i think that's pretty apparent uh, he's not as he has, doesn't have a bigger motor than Malik Juf now, might seem unfair to compare him to Malik Juf, but that was si Malik Juf yung Achilles heel ni Omar Jan eh. He Omar Jan plays well against other players. Other. Kay Malik Juf lang siya sobrang Grabe. na outshine. Diba? As in, ang layo, uh, ang, la, ang layo ng gap nila ni, ni Malik Juf. And if they're gonna win against UP, and I think they have to go through UP at some point in the upcoming season, Omar John has to match up, at least try to contain Malik Juf. I do remember in the final four, Malik Juf had like, what, 19 rebounds? Uh, just outworking Omar John. Just making Omar John look so small, so slow. Uh, so to me, an, up, an uptick in activity for Omar John. Uh, and at least one other offensive move to make Malik Juf uh, work. <laughs> Uh, so for me, ganun lang. Omar John, the he's pretty good, but the barometer is now Malik Juf. I think you could say na he's now the second best foreign student athlete, maybe in the UAAP for up yung sa mga holdovers from season eighty five. I from season oh, eighty five, yeah. Talo ko as in the from the holdovers. So you see, much face from season eighty five. I think he's now the second best. Na yung nawala si Ansko Ahmed, diba? So, si Malik Juf na yung best. Who's next? I think it's Omar John. So, but the gap is pretty significant, no? And if they're gonna win the title or get into the finals, Omar John has to show up. Yeah, speaking of, I know, that's a good point. Speaking of uh, uh, Steve, kanina sabi mo, Steve, sometimes Steve Nash looks like Steve Nash. And sometimes he disappears. Nalala ko lang si Omar John. Parang, I, I think I was hyping him up sa tatay ko. Sabi ko, uy, magaling tong Omar John. Yung import ng NU mukhang okay. Ganyan, ganyan. Then nanood kami ng NUUP game. Tapos, I think that was the 19 rebound game. Tapos sabi niya, yun ba yun? <laughs> yun ba yung import na magaling? <laughs> Pahiya ako eh. But uh, he needs to figure out Malik Diu for them to make it to the to the next level. Nung naglaro ba sila sa Pinoy Liga against against uh, UP in the semis, si Diasana din yun, no? Diasana lang. Uh, si Diasana. Okay. And, and he looked better than yeah, Omar John. Uh, as ever. Sa so Phil Oil, team. si Omar John ang naglaro. Phil Oil. And again, Malik Juf just had his number. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that game. I saw that game. That's why I asked. Parang, Nanalo na ba siya kay Malik Diouf yung sa Pinay Liga? But it was the Asana pala. Okay, Maui, anything you wanna add uh, to Omar John or Palacielo? I think si Gab mentioned naman most of the things that they have to work on. But but yeah, I think it's really about matching up with the other big men. Uh, contenders such as Ateneo and UP. And sige, lagay na rin natin Lasal. Lasal, potential contender. All have big men who a, a huge big man rotation at Neos, Amos, Balungay and Obasa, Lasalas, Phillips, Kiambao and uh, a few others depending on who will get more playing time. Uh UP has Alter, Diouf and uh, the other wing players. So if NU will actually for me ito yung pinaka essential eh. NU's big lineup or front court lineup has to be average at best versus them. If if the other front court lineups of these three teams destroy them, they're not gonna make it to the finals. That's a definite for me. So if NU match up again against UP and the uh Omar John still plays like this against the UF, then they probably don't deserve it to don't deserve to make the finals. So it really it Hopefully, tama si Gab, mag-breakout nga si Palacelo. So, para at least may, may other player that can supplement 
Omar John. Kasi if you watch and you know the previous season, they had a lot of problems when Omar, Omar John was in foul trouble. So hopefully that's something that we they work on. And actually, kanina Gab, kaya ako nagulat kasi kala ko, ino-open up mo na naman yung best foreign student athlete ko. Ay, kala ko si... Kala ko si... Kala ko si Malik nasa number two na. Sabi ko, sino yung na, sino yung na, na bump off? Si Kwame or si si Mbala? Ben Mbala. So, eh, kaya lang ako na, okay. na shock. If hindi nyo pa napapanood, by the way, if hindi nyo pa napapanood yung episode na yun where we talk about where we debate who the best foreign student athlete is in the UAP, watch that episode. We'll link it down below. Go, Maui. Baka ano, baka we can, ano, we can reopen that after this season if if Malik Dio has one of those monster foreign student athlete seasons similar to Ben Embala and UP Winston Ray. Let's see. Okay. Ooh, That's a good na. point. That's a good oh, point. Yeah. <laughs> so we so we sort of talked about all the players, you know, all the significant players returning. Uh, bonus question. Uh, medyo, uh, I don't know, Gab sort of mentioned this kanina, but if you were to look at the returning players, any of the guys that we talked about or maybe someone else and you could predict like this is going to be a breakout year for this guy um who is it going to be and who's going to have a breakout year this year gab i think i think i know where you're going so let's go with you uh yeah a whole Two players, no? I think I mentioned si PJ Palacelo. Pretty high. Oh, don't come muna. Don't come muna. Ah, sige. Palacelo muna. And then Maui. And then let's go back to your other player. Okay. Uh, si PJ Palacelo, I think it's... I've seen him play this preseason so many times already. And I firmly believe if he gets touches and he gets minutes, he can produce. Uh, ako impressed talaga ako. I think he has skills. He slimmed down. He looks more agile, more athletic. Uh, I would love to see him get minutes at power forward also. I think he, he can play that position. Uh, again, I'm not saying he's going to be a star player, mm-hmm. mythical five. Right. You know, I, I think he's primarily still a backup. But the youth star. I want to. S- <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's an additional weapon for for Jeff Napa. Again, I hate to hate on Jeremy Mahinay, but Jeremy Mahinay was a foul machine. <laughs> when, when he was the backup guy, his job was just to get fouls. And, I mean, you know... Fouls uh, in like four minutes or something like that. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I don't think that will be PJ Palacelo. I, I really think that PJ Palacelo can contribute and not just be a guy who will give up fouls. No, um, that's his role. And I'm hyped. Okay. Maui. Uh, sorry, just to add to the Palacelo discussion. I agree with you, Gab. Uh, same thing, no? I, when I saw him play last season, uh, may galaw to, sabi ko. May galaw to, ah. um, Solid. And he has, he's like pretty tall. Hindi siya undersized like mahina, eh, diba? Uh, and I think I, I think like the one thing that you sort of really like about a player lano na I, as, I assume Palacelo was a rookie last season but I could be wrong but like he was sort he was, of like was. Uh, a rookie going into his so, so far sophomore year when you see a rookie going and then when he becomes a sophomore and he slims down like that like he looks like significantly healthier and better you you can you kind of know this guy's serious this guy's ser- serious about becoming a better player being more fit he's putting in the work um, exactly he's putting in the work and that's what i like to see in in like a sophomore player you know like guys that are putting in the work so i think masipag to he's serious about it he's putting in the work so you know i wouldn't be surprised if we see great things from him maui yeah i think Aside from Palacelo, probably the player that I would choose is si Jake Figueroa. Uh, you know me, I love wing players. And uh, Jake Figueroa probably has a ceiling that is 
he can be a playmaker. He's a long, long, lanky, athletic player. So hopefully, he, if he has a breakout here, probably make the pro. Uh, similar to some wing players ni Pido dati. And probably some wing players ni Pido ulit since he's developing against the, the USD program again. But I think he's a type of player that really has a huge ceiling if he works on it. If he becomes a better playmaker, if he develops that outside shot, then he'll probably probably break out this season. And I think the departure of John Le Clemente really opens up a lot of minutes for for the two or three slots at uh, any, which is why I think if Figueroa does indeed consistently produce, he'll probably be one of the most improved players next season. And and si Figueroa played big nung high school, no? So he's like secretly strong then. No? Like may kita mo naman sa build niya, di ba? Mukhang, tingnan mo pa lang, parang mukhang malakas to. Ah. So, I think like him being like a big that's sort of like converting into a more uh, playmaking wing will just do wonders for him in terms of um, his prospects in the future. Then Not just like in NU, but uh, sabi mo nga, like when he turns pro. Gab, may isa ka pa. Let's hear it. Well, I was gonna say Jake Figueroa, but yeah. you know, let's make it more exciting. Uh, it's hard to get this guy to be a breakout player, but I'm still a fan of him. Steve fucking Nash Enriquez, man. I love this guy. Uh, we talk about Steve Nash and he needs to improve his scoring. If you watched him in Phil Oil, he was a scoring machine. Uh, without Kian Baklaan there. So, a bit of an asterisk there. I think Kian Baklaan was injured at, at, at that time. Uh, so, Steve Nash had control of the offense. And I remember he had a 28-point game. I, don't, I think it was against St. Clair or CEU in the Phil Oil uh, tournament. Uh, and that, that wasn't just one game. It was a series of games where Steve Nash was just balling and he was scoring at will, getting to the basket. But again, no, uh, I would like to see this against bigger competition, bigger, tougher competition. When teams really lock you down, dig in on defense, I want to see Steve Nash score like that. You know, um, again, he's he's the most en- he's one of the most entertaining guys in the UAAP. The name, the hair, the way he plays, he's so entertaining. I want to see him have a consistent scoring season, not just up and down, up and down. I, I want to see him score consistently. So, I'm going to pick Steve Nash also. <laughs> three years in a row. Two, three three seasons in a row. Three seasons <laughs> in a row si Gabi kay Steve Nash. Oh, <laughs> uh, loyal, loyal, ano, talaga, loyal fan is Steve Nash. But I, I was going to say, tama ka, no, Gab? Uh, actually, sasabihin ko dapat, he's like one of the most entertaining players. And yung yung aura niya eh. kasi nga, the hair the name the way he plays you you can't help but to cheer for him parang marinig mo pala eh nung una siyang naglaro di ba Steve Nash parang oh, sino yun sino yun ganun but he's he's very highly entertaining i love watching him the problem and with he's like also lot... their vo- go ahead, and he's go also ahead. their most vocal guy if you see them in their timeouts and even in the post game huddles where after la matalo manalo siya yung nagsasalita siya yung Tama. in the middle of it na sumisigaw sa mga players he, and he, he gets funny visibly he's, frustrated he, and he's the smallest guy but he's the one shouting at everyone pointing encouraging guys so i think he's a big part of their team talaga yeah yeah i, I was just going to say before we end the problem with entertaining players most of the time like they're inconsistent so I think you you hit it. Yung, I think you made like the, a really good point. No, it's really consistency for Steve Nash. Ang concern ko lang with that is like with all the new guards coming in, uh, I'm just not sure will he get a chance to play consistent minutes and be a more consistent player. I'm not. Good I'm luck. not sure that could be a challenge for him. But he is the vet, and sabi mo he kinda is the heart and soul of the team. So we'll see. Uh oi, that's it. That's it for this topic. We did not 
talk much about the new guys coming in because we sort of talked about them in the previous pod. And I think we're expecting to see more of these new guys as the season comes closer. So we'll definitely talk more about them. Any any last words, Maui, Gab, before we end the pod? Uh, ako, if there are UAP fans out there who have not followed the NU Bulldogs in the, in the last few seasons, I suggest you guys watch the NU Bulldogs. I love watching NU. Uh, they they play team basketball. No? They're coached pretty well and they're pretty strong. Ako talaga, uh, and remember, they were number one for a brief stretch in season 85. Uh, so the question by Sam to start this episode is pretty valid. What do they have to do to level yeah, up with the and be in the same level as UP or UP and Atene, which are obviously the top two teams who are coming from season 85? A very legitimate question. Yung, I think uh, NU is there, but not there. You get me? So... <laughs> Oi, that's it. That's it for today's podcast. Uh, thank you for listening. If you haven't yet, don't forget, like and subscribe. Subscribe to the page. Share it with your friends. We're trying to hit 1,000 subscribers before the start of the next season. Please support us. And, sorry, breaking news. We have a Spotify podcast uh, already. So if you want to listen to Bulle on the on Spotify while you're driving in your car, now you can. So we we usually update the Spotify playlist like a few days after we upload YouTube. Pero please, guys, we're trying to monetize YouTube. So subscribe pa rin kayo sa YouTube. And manood pa rin kayo sa YouTube. Ha? Bag- tapos makinig kayo din sa podcast. Okay? Thank you. See you again next week. Bye-bye.